Hello and welcome to this new Fortisor video. Today we'll see a use case where we download the latest uh, indicators from a cyber threat intelligence uh, source and then we make sure that none of these indicators exist in our environment which would be eventually an indication of an ongoing attack. So first we'll start by uh, getting the indicators um, to Fortisor instance. We parse them and then we create uh, with this data we create local uh, indicators which we'll then use uh, in um, threat hunting in, in search queries uh, to query the same to see whether uh, any of these indicators already exist or it has been seen within the environment. And then finally, if uh, a positive match uh, occurs, we will uh, raise an incident because eventually this indicates a, um, a, an ongoing attack. For threat intelligence service, we will be uh, using AlienVault OTX community where we have uh, access to the last hour uh, indicators that were that were discovered uh, by the threat intelligence service. Uh, we can select the type of indicators uh, we want and we can use various other filters to filter out what are the indicators that we would be uh, needing in, um, in our uh, Fortisor system. To get these indicators on Fortisor, we'll be using a couple of uh, uh, workflow uh, automations or a couple of playbooks. The first one would be uh, the uh, main one, so basically the one which downloads and creates the uh, uh, the indicators in Fortisor, and we do it over several steps. Well, one of them is eventually. Well, the first one is eventually to get the the count of uh, records. So we need to know how many. Uh, records how many indicators are available at uh, at the moment of making the request and this will help us to calculate how many pages uh, we need to request and um, the maximum that uh, uh, ODX actually uh, has is 100 record per request so we cannot get more than that that's why we need to calculate or to compute how many pages we have so uh, we can see this actually in the uh, execution history so uh, we have uh, these are the previous uh, executions and then we can see that the first thing we do is basically to get the counts or records count which we get through the uh, alien vault uh, OTX uh, connector or integration once we have uh, the record count we can go ahead and compute the number of pages which we will use afterwards to create the individual URLs of in each individual page now to create the URL, which is basically uh, uh, the uh, obviously the host name and uh, a number of uh, attributes, one one of the most important attributes in this um, uh, specific uh, task is the page number, and this is where we create a list of pages, and then we will iterate over uh, these pages and create individual URLs for each for each uh, specific page to get the records of that of of that page, and to do that we would use the uh, referenced playbook, the get indicators. We can see here. The, uh, all the executions of the uh, nested or the referenced uh, playbook that we used in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, workflow. And we can clearly see that each uh, referenced playbook will take as parameter a separate or an individual uh, URL, which is then uh, used to fetch the, um, the records associated with that specific page. So here, for example, page equals 20, and then the limit is 100, which is basically the uh, web service uh, limit. But then here we have basically the request, which will fetch the, um, the 20th page uh, records. And we can see it here clearly in the output. So here we have, uh, so this is one of the uh, last pages, or maybe probably the last page. So we have 20, 95 uh, record in, in this page. All right. now. Once all these uh, individual nested playbooks have been executed, so all the pages have been uh, recovered and all the records have been recovered, we need to check whether um, these indicators actually exist in our uh, environment or not. To do that, we do it in two steps. So the first step is to create the uh, local indicator in, uh, in Fortisor. So if you go to indicators, we will find all the uh, records that were uh, basically fetched from 
the uh, threat intelligence service and then at this moment for each individual record we perform a threat hunting so we need to know whether this record exists in our uh, system in our uh, sim um, or, or not if it exists eventually we need to uh, create an incident and I'll show you a bit later how, how it is. And if it's not eventually, uh, so this is um, this is good. So we don't have any match and uh, therefore there's nothing to worry about. Now, if there is a match and we find it typically in the incidents, this means that one of the uh, very recent uh, threats is already within our network. And that's how we create um, that's how we create an incident uh, for it, which uh, requires investigation and eventually uh, incident response. And this way, uh, so to just to summarize, we get the latest um, uh, indicators from a threat intelligence service. We check for each individual uh, indicator whether it already exists in our system, in our environment, and then if it exists, we create a um, an incident and and remediate it eventually with with Folisor. All right, that would be all for uh, this one and see you in the next one.